Hi, beautiful people. Welcome to the Fort Salem Library, where we read you your fanfiction. So sit down or don't, relax or don't, and enjoy these stories in a way you have not before. We at Fort Salem Library do not own Motherland Fort Salem or any of the related characters. The Motherland Fort Salem series is created by Elliot Lawrence and owned by Freeform. This story is a work of fan fiction and is meant for entertainment only. We are not making any profit from these stories. All rights of the original Motherland Fort Salem story belong to Freeform. We also do not own I Once Was Lost or any of its original characters and storylines. We did however get permission from the author to read their story. This story was created and written by Artemis99, and you can find the link in our show notes. This story is being read to you by me, Britt. I once was lost. All that was here. She was here, at the wedding. She needed to see her with her own eyes. Telly wondered if she had summoned her from the gardens when she had been on her knees, pleading to all the deities that would listen to save Sarah from the ice cave and deliver her back to her. She was grieving once again. How was it she let Alda break her heart over and over again? She blamed a connection that still ruled her feelings, her heart. She was honest with herself. She just simply loved her, and she had failed in her fierce need to protect her. Abs and Ray had convinced her to mingle and try and forget about Alder. But now she knew Alder was here. She couldn't believe she had let Gregorio flirt with her during the lead up to the wedding. Weddings, plural, now that Adil and Abigail were to join Ray and Scylla. She found out about it when Anacostia had stopped her in the hall and told her she had just spoken to Alder, but that the former general was on her way out. Now Telly had only one thought. Stop her from leaving. She rushed through the numerous hallways of the Bellwetter estate, trying to find her. Finally, she glimpsed the tall brunette through the huge bay windows. Damn it, she was walking down the driveway. Fuck, she's leaving, like right now. Not again. Tally stopped, pressed her forehead against the portico door to compose herself, steadying her nerves before she yanked the door open to try and stop Alder from disappearing again. I heard you were here. Tally said a little breathless as she caught up with Alder. You didn't really think you'd seen the last of me, did you? Sarah rasped, and she turned to face Tally. Um, you're not staying for the wedding? Why does that not surprise me? Weddings, Sarah sighed. And my work isn't done. A piece of the song still remains to be found. Where are you heading? Africa, tracking the Abyssinian line. Do you think there's a chance things have changed? That we won't need the song? I think there's always a chance, but that's a risk I'm not willing to take. Tally nodded to herself, making up her mind in an instant. I'm coming with you. No. Sarah sounded so soft, but determined. Because I don't have my sight? Tally questioned, inching closer. Because you have a much greater part to play now, and I can't risk your safety. So what would you have me do in the meantime? Telly was hurting and confused. It was like this was a different alder than the one from the ice cave. Telly had felt the older women's panic as alder fought to free her from the ice witch, and Telly's heart had shattered along with the cave, entombing the person who still held it. Please don't leave again. Celebrate your loved ones while you can. All of this might change very soon. Sarah looked sad as she turned to leave but Tally was done being pushed away. After coming so close to spilling all her feelings the last time they had been together, but mountains of ice, swords, and body swamps had put a halt to such confessions, Tally was not letting Alder walk away again. If the end was coming, she had to try. You can't be serious. You're doing it again? I thought we were past this by now. You've gone through so much the last few years, these past few months. We need to talk. Tally just continued her monologue without letting Sarah speak. I'm still mad about the ice cave. I mean, I could have lost you. I, I thought I did. 
again, and and you promised to save yourself. Sally, don't. Alder couldn't bear it. She looked away. Please, there's no time. We can't do this now. This day is for you and your sisters. You can't miss it. Alder attempted to reason with the infuriatingly persistent woman. She turned her back once more. She had to leave before she made a fool of herself. Stay for an hour. Stand next to me when they get married. Then I'll come with you. Telly begged, grasping her wrist. No, you can't. I won't risk. Sarah spoke into the long drive, not daring to look the redhead in the eye. Do this for me, please. Sarah, please stay. It was the Sarah that made her pause and turn back, eyes brimming, silently pleading for Tally to let her go. But as Tally looked a little deeper, a glimpse of an unbearable longing and a spark of something else, only Sarah could express so much in a glance. Tally's heart hammered in her chest as she stepped closer, easing into Alder's space, reeling her in until she could lift a trembling hand to the older woman's cheek, a mirror of times past. She surged the cobalt depths of her answers. When she saw in that moment was Sarah Alder, not the glimpses of the mother she'd seen before. Only Sarah, the mass of contradictions Tally could not help but love. If the end of the world was coming, as she had foretold in her vision, so be it. But not before she got to kiss her person, the one she still felt deep in her chest, the one she ate for every night, the one she'd grieved so many times. Tally leaned in, touching foreheads, thumb stroking along the cheekbone. She closed her eyes and let her heart finally speak its truth, simple and sure. If we only have a short time left, whether this ends badly for us or not, I want to spend it with you. I don't think I can stand it if you leave again. Telly was determined to keep going. You know you're still the one. After all this time, after everything, you've always been the one I wanted, standing right in front of me. I was just too stubborn and hurt to see it. Ironic, I know. But Tally. Tally glanced down at Sarah's full lips and back into her eyes. Stop fighting it, Sarah, and kiss me. I want you to just... Finally, Alder tipped her chin up and tilted her head ever so slightly and closed the gap until their lips tentatively met. Tally moaned and Sarah pulled her in cupping both elbows. Telly deepened the kiss, her tongue breaching Sarah's mouth, tasting, exploring, relishing. She'd wanted this for so long. Alder pulled back, eyelids fluttering open, moving both her hands to hold Telly's face delicately. You win. I surrender. I can't fight you this fight anymore. I don't want to. Come to Africa with me. Tally smiled one of her thousand-watt smiles as she led Alder by the hand towards the party and attend where the ceremonies were going to take place only a few minutes from now. Seated next to Tally and Kalita, Alder felt Tally cross her arms and slid her fingers around Sarah's bicep, squeezing her during the vows. Alder let her pinky graze the outside seam of Tally's elegant jumpsuit. Gregorio caught the slight touches in his periphery and frowned. He was about to ask Galita to switch seats with him. He really thought he had a chance with the young knower, but competing with General Alder was pointless. A disappointed Shellbark sighed. He knew when he had been bested and refocused on the happy couples on the days. If you're coming, it's time. Alder leaned down and whispered in her ear, as Stelly stood talking to Ray and Abs congratulating them before she told them what they had already suspected. She was leaving with Alder. Alder, whose eyes never left Tally as she said her goodbyes. So, you and Alder, huh? Ray teased, a spark of mischief in her eye. Yeah, always. I can't let her go alone. I can't let her walk away. But hopefully we'll be back soon, once we find a last piece, she said bashfully as she hugged her sisters. I love you guys. I'm so happy for you both. Go, follow your heart. Abigail was obviously feeling sentimental, 
as the trio held on to each other, honoring the moment. I am. I'll see you all soon. Alder was about to say something, but Ray interrupted. Yeah, yeah, trust the mother, we know. You better take care of her. I will. Abyssinia was a blur. The lost line seemed to disappear along with its song to the gold coast of Ghana in the town of Elmina. It was nightfall before they got there. It took some doing, but they found a room near the bustling center of town. The room was small and kind of dark, but Tally didn't care. She needed rest. Alder could see the strain on Tally's face. She hadn't seen her dimples for what seemed like days. The small room had one full-size bed and a cot. Tally insisted she take the smaller cot. She was exhausted and just wanted to sit down, maybe take a power nap. She thumped down on the mattress, and the frame gave a loud groan, followed by a sharp crack. Tally's eyes widened in surprise as the whole thing collapsed, and she let out an embarrassing squeal as she landed flat on her back in a cloud of dust. Sarah tried to stifle her chuckle. Tally glared at her, but she couldn't hold it in any longer. She burst out laughing. It was musical and unexpected. Tally loved it. The tension of the unknown. The pure exhaustion from endless travel and the meticulous research they had been doing, trying to trace a line that was lost to history, weighed heavily on both women. The laughter brought a welcome relief from all the stress. Tally could not help but join her. She knew she looked ridiculous. Limbs akimbo, bad frame and splinters, dust settling all around her. Sarah finally took pity on her and extended her arm. Tally grabbed her wrist, and she was pulled to her feet with a little more force than necessary. She stumbled forward into Sarah. The earth stood still in that moment, as their gazes locked. Sarah gasped, her eyes dilating as she held on to Tally. Here we are again, Sarah breathed out. She seemed more unsure than the redhead had ever seen her. Tally placed her palm over the thundering heart of the woman standing so very close her energy rippling like a mirage. She could feel it in her fingertips. She could feel it in her soul. She could see it, despite losing her sight. The connection. So what are you going to do about it? Tally was playing with fire and she knew it. She swore she had seen an actual spark flash Sarah's pupils before she was pulled hard against the older woman. One strong arm wound around her waist, making retreat impossible. Calloused fingers pushing the hair off her face, moving under her copper mane to cup the back of her head. Then Alder took her breath away altogether, by kissing her with a raw passion Tally was not expecting. She was delirious for a moment, but as she came back to herself, she had to know. Wait, Sarah, wait. You know I've never wanted anything more than for you to take me to bed right now. But I need to know. Is it you? My Sarah Alder, can it be all you, or is the mother always part of you now? Tally, it's me. I promise. I have to work very hard at keeping the link to the mother shut down. She is nothing but single-minded in this mission, and she can be really bitchy and demanding. But right now, it's only us, I swear to you. Sarah pushed a strand of hair behind Tally's ear, waiting to see what a young knower would decide. And she decided... Sassy was the answer. So, she's kind of like you when you were the general? Tally wondered, if that was a little too far to push their banter. Exactly, Sarah deadpanned. No, but seriously. How much does it take out of you to shut the mother out? Is it safe? Tally bit her lip and just took a leap of faith. Because if you think you'd be all right, I would really like it if you made love to me like the end of the world is coming. Tally. Sarah pulled her in all the way, holding her against her chest. Tally felt the rumble of her voice against her ear more easily than the softly spoken words. Yes, tonight it's just us. Sarah and Tally, world be damned. Yes, I want that too. I want to see you, all of you. I want to feel your skin. Sarah had never been shy about her body. So she stepped back, and she slowly undressed for her soon-to-be lover, thoroughly enjoying the effect she was having on Tally. Breathe, darling, 
Sarah husked as she stood up from discarding the last of her clothes. Sarah, you're so, so stunning. Can I, can I? Tilly asked while extending her hand as much as she had done in the roadhouse months ago. Mesmerized by the nude woman standing, waiting, waiting to see what Tally was going to do next. What Tally was going to do was not waste any more time. This could be her only chance. War or worse was coming, and coming soon she knew it. She had seen it. So she was feeling bold, and this hot and muggy night, she was finally alone with the woman she had fallen for so long ago. The connection was still there. She felt like she was going to explode with every emotion ricocheting back and forth between them. Tally slowly undid her button-down shirt as she walked towards Alder. When she was in reach, Sarah replaced Tally's hands and unfastened the remaining two buttons, raking her eyes from her smooth stomach up to her eyes, still hesitant as she stole a quick glance down to Tally's parting mouth before locking gazes as she slid her hands up the opening of Tally's shirt gently pushing it off the tent's shoulders, blue eyes watching for any sign she should stop before letting the cotton fall to the floor. Unclasping her bra with a deadly efficient movement and relegating it to the floor as well, Sarah reached behind her and flicked off the light, taking Tally's trembling hand in hers and leading her to the one remaining bed, guiding her to sit down. The redhead stared up at her, Desire written all over her face as Sarah kneeled down in front of her, stroking her fingers down Tally's bare shoulders to her waist, reaching to the front of her linen slacks, her hands stilling. Can I take these off? Please, I need to feel you against me. Oh, my angel. Sarah popped the button and coaxed Tally to lift her hips so she could strip the pants and underwear off in one go. Sarah moaned as she caught a glimpse of glistening wetness in the auburn thatch at the apex of the impossibly long sculpted legs. The street light below gave an unearthly amber glow to their room, the feel of Sarah's hands making her insides flip and her breath hitch as she slid them up her thighs, leaning in to capture her lips in the most tender kiss, moving so gently against her lips. She let her eyes close in response when Sarah licked ever so slightly into her mouth. Tally took her by surprise by cupping the back of her head and pulling her closer, and she whined when Sarah broke the kiss, her eyes blazing with desire. This was Alder. There was no doubt. The fire behind those crystal blues had Tally dripping. As the older woman nibbled her way down Tally's throat and nipped and sucked along the clavicle before kissing her above the left breast right over her heart, lips lingering on the smooth, pale skin. Tally... I've wanted this for so long. May I... May I taste you? Fuck yes, anything. The raven-haired woman sunk back on her heels as she kissed and licked her way down to her sex, eyes never leaving her lovers, as she let her tongue tease and explore, parting her lips until she circled her clit, making Tally buck her hips into her mouth, moaning loudly. Sarah gripped her hip with one hand and lay her forearm over the surging abdomen to pin her down as Sarah continued to feast. She only stopped once to command her to keep her eyes on her as she slid down to the soaked opening, gathering her exquisite essence in her mouth before thrusting her stiffened tongue into her sex as far as she could reach, fucking her slow, probing, stroking, and enjoying the clench as she sped up and felt a fresh wave flood into her mouth down over her chin. Deeper. Letting go of her hip, Sarah brought her long fingers down to spread Telly open and slid easily inside, pushing in until she was knuckle-deep. Fuck. Sarah pulled out much to Telly's dismay. No, don't stop, I need... Shh, baby, I know. I just want to have all of you beneath me. I want to kiss you while I'm inside you. Come on, move back on the bed. When Tally scooted up, Sarah crawled over her, making Tally's mouth suddenly dry. The pure hunger in Sarah's eyes had her gushing anew as her lover lowered herself to melt their bodies together, elbows framing the younger woman's head smoothing the hair out of her face, kissing her forehead, her eyes, the corner of her mouth before spending time exploring her lips. Tally was shocked when she felt tears fall from above as Sarah kissed her reverently. 
Tully held Sarah's head to cup in the jaw of a woman she adored. Despite everything that had happened since they had met, she loved her. She was absolutely and totally in love with Sarah Alder. Sarah. Tully breathed so low it sounded more like a sub fogel seed. Will you let me make you feel good? I want to show you how much I care about you. Sarah asked almost shyly when she took a second to stop kissing the most phenomenal woman. Please. Alda worked her hand between her bodies. She nudged Tally's thighs apart, cupping her throbbing core, watching for her reaction as she entered her again. Tally's eyes dilated, desire burning through her veins. Sarah dropped her leg between Tally's, lending power to her thrusts. Her lover arched up into her, offering her taut nipples to the older woman. Bowing her back up to Sarah, she fucked her. Who was Sarah to refuse such a tantalizing gift? She kissed around the areola until the peak was rock hard, straining towards Alder's lips, begging for attention. Sarah pulled her fingers almost all the way out before she sucked the hard nub into her mouth. At the same time, she thrust into her heart. Tally screamed, pleasure short-circuiting her brain. She gripped Sarah's hair, holding her tight against her breast. Sarah was losing her iron-tight control. She started rocking against Tally. She released a nipple with a pop, resting her forehead against Tally's, sweat making them slide against each other. Sarah was panting just as hard as Tally. The sound of her fingers fucking into Tally's tightening core was borderline obscene. The wet sounds echoing in the squalid hotel room brought Sarah closer to her own orgasm. Tally raked her nails down the muscular back. The sting burning Sarah's skin made her thrust harder and deeper. She was close as she pressed her face into Tally's neck, trying to hold herself in check until her lover came. Sarah rubbed her thumb against Tally's clit. Tally was calling Sarah's name, every muscle tight. That's it, Angel. Let go, my love. I've got you, Sarah whispered, lips moving in Tally's ember strands right next to her ear. Come for me. It was everything Tally had ever fantasized about. As she cried out Sarah's name one last time, she felt an unbearable happiness as she climaxed in Sarah's arms. Tears leaked from the corner of her eyes, streaming down her cheekbones into her ears and onto Sarah's face and lips. Sarah pulled back just enough to see her lover's face, concern and lingering desire etched on her face, long strands of her dark mane curtaining them, intimate, private. It only made Tally's tears flow faster. Tally? Tally, are you all right? The skin around the most beautiful molasses brown eyes Sarah had ever seen crinkled at Tally smiled, one of these face-splitting grins that stopped Sarah's heart mid-thud. I'm better than I ever thought possible, Tally said as she pushed back long black hair over Sarah's shoulder, her hand then cupping the angular cheek trying to read the emotion behind a complicated enigma gazing down at her. Sarah, I want you to know whatever happens after we find the last piece of the song. This will be my happiest memory. I've waited so long for you. I've waited all my life for you, Tally, Sarah whispered, as she leaned down until she could kiss Tally with excruciating tenderness. Floating in a daze of Sarah's kisses, she felt her glide against her thigh, hot and slick. When Sarah realized what she was doing, she pulled away, embarrassed by her need in this soft moment. Tally grabbed her ass and rocked her against her leg. Please stay. Sarah closed her eyes, holding herself up basically planking above her lover as she rocked in short, hard strokes against a strong quad. The feel of Sarah's glutes flexing in her grip made her excitement skyrocket again. The moans and grunts coming from Sarah as she slid towards orgasm, sparking a deep thirst, and the need to be inside her lover when she came overtook Tally. She worked one hand to Sarah's hard clit, moving further down, parting her lips until she could enter her with two fingers. Sarah ground down into her digit with a rumbling roar, expelled into the small room. Sarah set back to better ride her lover. She was desperate for climax. Tally moved her free hand onto Sarah's sternum to support her as she added a third finger. Sarah gasped, stilling for an instant before riding her harder, speeding up, 
thumbing her clit against Tally's palm. Tally was sure she had never seen anything as beautiful as Sarah, free, wild, edging towards ecstasy. She would remember this moment for the rest of her life. Sarah came, hard, head thrown back, tendons in her long, elegant neck straining as she moaned through the powerful orgasm, milking Tally's fingers as she slowly came down from sweet release. Several aftershocks making her slump on the hand, bracing her chest. Tally guided her down to lay next to her, finally pulling out and wiping her hand on the sheets before she curled around Sarah. That was amazing. Pretty sure that's my line, Sarah laughed, pulling the younger woman closer, kissing the top of her head. Thank you, Sarah said as she tugged her under her chin, holding her protectively, silently imploring the mother to keep her safe. Morning came faster than either of them would have wished. They had to get up, because they had to meet someone who might have some information on the whereabouts of the obsidian line. Sunlight beaming through the shutters, a shaft of light illuminating the two women curled around each other. It was market day, and the noise from the street started early rousing the lovers. They had a mystery to solve and needed to get back to Fort Salem before Rael, the witch bomb, did something terrible. Tally was preoccupied. She was sure Sarah's hair was a little more silver this morning. She was biting her lip worried, unsure how to bring it up before they walked out of this safe space to meet their contact. Are you okay, Sarah? Did last night... Did I hurt you? Tell me the truth, please. No, darling. I'm okay, really. Telly gave her the look. Even if it did take a little out of me, I wouldn't change a thing, Alder said as she turned to exit the room. Tally grabbed her wrist, stopping her, pinning Sarah to the door. Look, I need you. I was so lost when I couldn't feel our... connection. First, after we lost the biddies, and I had to put you into the wall. And then again when you blasted me out of the ice cave. I was so angry. Angry and empty. I wished I had died crushed under the ice with you. It would have been far better than trying to live without you. So please, promise me. We will do this together, for better or worse. Sarah was stunned and in awe of this extraordinary woman and only nodded in response. Tally searched her eyes for the truth before she kissed her thoroughly. Okay, let's go, Tally announced, as she pushed by a speechless alder, who was left staring after the redhead, touching her lips with quaking fingers before she snapped out of it and followed Tally down the hall towards the market. The sky was eerie, Swirling cyrus clouds in yellow-green, like that creepy pre-tornado light, a strange energy making her hair on the back of Sarah's neck stand at attention. Stay close and cover up your hair. Both women pulled shawls over their heads before heading into the indoor market. They were to meet the informant in the northwest corner, working their way over, passing numerous stands with all sorts of good layout. Tally smiled and declined many offers as they moved closer to the expected meeting point. The explosion was so loud, and the wall close to the entrance was reduced to rubble before the concussion wave reached them. Sarah pulled Tally in front of her, shielding her from flying debris. She was checking the redhead over when a guttural seed made the whole market freeze, and Tally crumpled at her feet. She was in trouble. Military men from Ghana's uber-militant police force were surrounding them, clearly angered by her presence. She needed to get them out, and fast. Sarah fell to the ground, covering the unconscious woman, wrapping one arm around Tally's waist and slamming her palm to the dirt floor, mycelial strands quickly enveloping them both and transporting them away from the scene and depositing them into the archives of the Middle Passage Museum. Tally came too pretty quickly, dazed and confused, but it only lasted for a few moments. She was trying to get more comfortable with Sarah's unique method of travel, but now they had to move fast. A little digging in some lock pointed them to the next clue. It had a high probability of being found in the import records in Kingston, Jamaica. Tally knew that they had overstayed their welcome in Elmina, but Ghana would always be the place she had spent what she thought of as their impromptu honeymoon. Tally was nauseous from hitting so many locations so quickly. She was dizzy, her stomach in knots when they found themselves outside an abandoned plantation in Virginia. The ivy thick 
covering the old stone walls, trailing across the ground of the entrance and up to the iron gates. Sarah was working fast, pulling the ivy of the wall next to the gate. Tally watched swallowing bowel, trying not to vomit, when Sarah clutched her chest, screaming in pain, eyes terrifyingly black, skin pale. Sarah! Tally was panicking. What was happening? They were alone, yet the anguish in Sarah's scream nearly undid her. Sarah staggered, and Tally held her up. Sarah gasped, rubbing her chest, willing to stabbing pain away. Sarah took a deep breath and closed her eyes, steadying herself as she realized this could only mean one thing. The mother had been attacked. Her mycelium network was damaged and in agony. Fort Salem was probably in deep trouble. Hey, hey, easy. There you are. Tally watched her until she was sure Sarah could stand on her own. When she did, she looked at Tally with an unbelievable sadness in her eyes. The war has come to our home, Tally. The Camarilla are in Fort Salem. What? Are you sure? Damn it. I'm so sorry. I don't have my sight anymore. I could have helped. I should have seen it coming. What do we do? Sarah, can you stand? Tally was frustrated and worried. So worried. As an answer, Sarah went back to work pulling fistful of vines from the column that supported the raw iron gates. Sarah suddenly stopped, staring. Tally came forward, hand on Sarah's hip leaning over her shoulder. And there it was, in large block letters chiseled into the stone. Bellwether. They both stared at the name, then at each other. Holy shit! Abigail is... is the last steward? Tally was shocked, looking at Alder. The pieces falling together in her mind. So it would seem. So many histories stolen. Even with Alder's long life and everything she had done to preserve the history of witchkind, hatred and ignorance had silenced so many powerful lines. Even the bellwethers had their lineage back to the first song, eradicated by the horrors of the slave trade and witch trials. We have to gather the stewards and go back. Sarah, are you strong enough? Do you think Rael's affected too? Probably. To both questions. Okay. This is it. What we've been training for. It's time to get home with a little detour for the other stewards first. Can you do this? Telly swallowed hard and set her shoulders, readying herself for the battle ahead. She would do anything in her power to see that Sarah survived this invasion of Fort Salem. Sarah and Tally were scouting away onto base, but it was pandemonium everywhere. Free fighters for the session, nicked to spree rebels all fighting with regular army troops. It became clear that the Camarilla had perfected their tech. The hideous approximation of their work now could cancel out their most powerful seeds with their numbers were great enough. Sarah watched, anger boiling. Another birthright stolen and corrupted to be used against them. They were nearing the necropolis when they came across a huge force. It was bearing down on them. More troops than Telly had ever seen in one place, and she was scared, looking to Alder for direction. Sarah stopped and murmured, It's going to be okay, Telly. Her eyes turned an eerie ice blue, her body tensing, hands thrust to the sky as she summoned her storm, the same one she had unleashed at her sister's hanging, the one that had started it all. The song intensified until black lightning erupted above and flashed in all directions, turning night into day, in a nanosecond. Camarilla all around them blasted to their deaths. Sarah staggered. Tally was at her elbow immediately. Sarah, that's enough. Let's go. We've got to get to the necropolis. Come on, you need your strength, Tally said under her breath, as she signaled for Kalita to follow with the rest of the stewards. It was clear the number of casualties were going to be huge. The bodies of friends and foes scattered everywhere. They had to find her sisters and fast. She could feel it in her bones, despite losing her sight. Her vision was coming true. The group was rounding a wall in the courtyard. They were getting close to their destination when Sarah's anguished cry made them all freeze. Anacostia? No! No! Anna, look at me! Come on! Please! Sarah was frantic, leaning over the front of a Humvee, pushing the hood of her daughter's face the ice-cold skin confirming her worst fears. Sarah couldn't just leave her there. With a growl Telly had heard only once before in the ice cave when she had been possessed by the ice witch, 
Sarah used her Cillian strength and shoved the truck away, catching her daughter in her arms as her body slipped off the hood. Sarah went to her knees with her, rocking an acacia against her chest. My daughter! Tally softly placed her hand on Alder's shoulder. Sarah. The heart-wrenching pain in Sarah's eyes was palpable. It was a look Tally knew she never would allow anyone else to see. The object pain and it tore her apart, rending her. She had to be strong for her now. Let's move her by those trees and place a ward over her. Tally choked on her words. The thought that Anacostia Quartermain, the formidable witch who had watched over her unit since basic, was gone, was too much to take in right now. She could feel Sarah's shattered heart alongside her own. Tally knew she couldn't let her feelings overtake her. Not when they were so close. Love, we've got to go. Tally gently coaxed Sarah. The hand-to-hand -hand was fierce as they made their way to the mycelial chamber. Tally could feel Sarah at her back fighting, leveling her seeds at the enemy, scourges flying, cutting their way through the lab. They were almost there when a cloud of bats flew by. Nicta? Tally and Sarah both exclaimed at the same time. In Isidora's lab, Nicta and her troops were standing in the midst of carnage, calmly looking up when the group entered. About time, Sarah, Nicta said with her usual snark. Where is Rael Collar? There's not much time, Sarah asked, ignoring the jab. Nicta just motioned with her chin towards the living wall. Thank you, Nicta. Sure thing, Sarah. Anything for you. Nicta just couldn't help the sarcasm. The stewards were shocked by the state of the mycelium. A portal was opened through the sickly strands. The usual pulse of energy was absent as they walked slowly into the heart of the mycelium. This is what I saw, Telly said in awe as she led the group across the bridge. She broke into a run when she saw the state of her sisters. Ray was laid out on a glowing slab, as in her vision. A deal was passed out against it. Abigail was crying. Abigail never cried. Scylla looked hurt or sick and was holding her sister's hand. Telly ran up to Ray's other side. Ray! Ray, we know who the last steward is. It was Abs the whole time, and I think I figured out what we need to do. When we sing the song, Ray, send the sound everywhere, through the whole world. Okay, Tell. It's time. Ray wanted this over with. She needed to save Scylla. Sarah was talking to Abigail, who was listening carefully, a shocked expression on her face. But how will I know how to sing it? It's yours. You'll know how. Sarah squeezed her hand as she led her to her stand, with the keepers of the first song around Riel. The stewards were ready. Sarah looked at Tally with a smile meant only for her, before she nodded to Kalita, who started the haunting melody. Six voices layering soaring into a crescendo that Ray unleashed into the most improbable tsunami of spores, the mother amplifying it until it spread upward and outward, using the ozone layer to blanket the world. Ray is the first to move, her gift for healing stronger than ever, and soon Adil and Scylla are in the arms of their spouses. Tally is holding back, looking up at Sarah with adoration and pride, until the older woman opens her arms and she falls into the tight embrace. Abigail, always the leader, wanted to go see what they had achieved. She also needed to make sure her mom was okay. She had so much to tell her about Jem in the first song. She got the group ready to leave and head to the surface. Sarah was hanging back, looking strangely sad considering they had just saved Fort Salem and changed the world. Tally, wait. Can I talk to you? Alone? Sarah asked softly saying the last part as her sisters turned around, looking worried. Now? Sarah only nodded. Tally spoke slowly to her sisters as they made their way out. Her eyes never left Sarah's, searching, dread worming its way through her guts and into her heart. It's all right. We'll catch up with you in a minute. When they are alone, Sarah steps into Tally's space, so close, her fingertips ghosting against Tally's cheek so tentative as she closes the distance, searching her face, memorizing it again, before kissing the younger woman so very softly, it was unbearable. I'm so proud of you, darling, Sarah murmured against her lips, cradling her face, foreheads pressed against each other. 
She took a deep, shuddering breath and closed her eyes. She knew she was about to hurt Tally. She hoped she would learn to forgive her, but she needed to tell her the truth. She owed her that and so much more. Sarah closed her eyes and tightened her grip on Tally's jaw, swallowing the lump in her throat several times before she finally just said it. The mother is telling me my work is done. She... She's calling me back to her side. What? No, Sarah, you promised. I love you. D Please don't. Don't go. We have a chance now. Why? She finished in a whimper. It is the will of the mother angel. I wish I could stay by your side. I do. Tally, please believe me. Tally just nodded against her love. Tears falling again. Sarah surged forward, tilting her head and kissing her desperately, putting all that was left unsaid, all the love she felt for Tally Craven, into this final kiss. Needing to breathe, Sarah pulled back to the positions of intimacy touching foreheads, holding each other's faces. I'll love forever. Sarah's words hanging in the air as she dissolved into dust right in her hands. The anguished eyes of Sarah Alder, the last to disappear. Tally broke. Alder! The gut-wrenching scream brought Tally to her knees. Sarah, please don't leave me. She was trying to gather the spores swirling on the ground with her hands, sobbing uncontrollably. Then anger exploded in her chest. How could you do this to us? We've done everything you've asked. Sarah gave over 300 years of her life in service, and this is how you repay her. Take away her chance at happiness. To live a life with no shackles. Fuck you! Tally turned her back on the pulsing mycelium and ran out without looking back, furious and heartbroken. Ray saw her first, and alone. The shattered, empty look on Tally's face was all she needed to know as she pulled her sister into her arms and held her as she fell apart. She's gone, Ray. She's gone. The mother. She took her back. She cried on her shoulder until she felt Scylla and Abigail join in, holding Tally as she grieved. Later that night, Tally couldn't sleep. She had assured her sisters they could go and be with their partners, that she would be fine. She knew her sisters didn't quite believe her, but she could also tell they needed space, that she wanted to be alone for a while. That's how she found herself wandering the grounds of Fort Salem, deep into the woods, thinking about Sarah and everything it had been through. And still, after it all, she knew she would miss her for as long as she lived. There would always be an empty spot by her side where Sarah should be. She wandered into a clearing, the clouds parting, the moon shining brightly on Tally's face as she lifted her face to the heavens, pushing out her love into the universe, hoping Sarah could feel it somehow. The grief of missing her soon filled her again. She felt so lost as she dropped to her knees, just like she had seen Kalita and Scylla do in the session. She sang her own piece of the song as she sang it morphed into a song of grief, hands fisting in the dirt, singing with her whole soul, hoping to summon her Sarah. She sung for hours until her throat was raw, coughing up blood as she finally stopped. Tally sped it out, exhausted. She just kept imploring the mother, face pressed in the dirt, impressions of sticks and leaves embossed on her forehead. Please. Tally was spent. She was contemplating just curling up under the tall pines and sleeping until daybreak. After all, that was only a few hours away. Tally? In a tree line, there was a shadow. Tally's blurry eyes watched as it slid out into the moonlight. She couldn't breathe. She thought she was going mad. It was her. Sarah Alder, it had to be. Please let it be real. Tully gasped as her sight came back all at once, disorienting for a second and then so much stronger than it had ever been before. That's when she knew. She knew the mother had heard her anguish and given Sarah her mortality back, had healed her much like she had done for Ray. Sarah, the warrior, the protector of witches stripped down to her essence, was standing in the clearing in a plain black boat-neck t-shirt, an army fatigues barefoot. 
her beautiful face, natural and stunning, hair messy and falling over strong shoulders, indigo eyes sparkling in the light of the moon. It was Sarah, stripped to her essence, just a woman looking at her with hope etched in her gaze. When the figure didn't move for a minute, till he thought she might be hallucinating, until she heard it, that voice, silk over gravel making her heart hammer up into her throat. I came back for you. Please find a fanfiction you just listened to on Archive of Our Own and leave the author some love. Without them, this wouldn't be possible, and we want to thank them from the bottoms of our hearts for creating these amazing stories and keeping the show alive.